All praises to Yahweh, but Hashem Yahweh Shai, but Hashem Makakwadash, the one under the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and Shalawam to the elected nation of Israel. I'm going to talk about the transferring of God's curses, all right? Because you've got Christianity that doesn't even like to mention the curses of God for starters, right? They don't like to mention it. And then when it does get spoken about, they try and say that the curses are gonna are like you can find the curses in all people, and they don't want to try and do what the scriptures say and show that the curses are gonna be a sign as to who the Israelites are. They try and say that all people are facing these curses, but that wouldn't make sense because all people are not Israelites, are they? So they're very sneaky when it comes to the thing, the truth of the Bible, man. And and to be quite honest, they're disgusting, man. Christianity is disgusting to me. Right, they they just lie all the time, and Christianity, right? What these people do in these churches and all of the things that they talk about hasn't got nothing to do with what's really written in the Bible. The things that they're speaking about and the things that they do haven't got nothing to do with the Bible, man. And that's why some of these churches in the West Midlands, right, during the last during December, around the twenty the twentieth and all that, right, some of the videos of them teaching the congregation, they was wearing Christmas jumpers, man, and they was wearing Christmas hats. And I was wearing reindeer ears. But we're supposed to take them seriously and think that they're about the Lord. They're not about the Lord, man. They don't really believe in the Bible. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be, till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearken not unto the voice of Yahweh thy power to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So the curses were going to be on the Israelites as a sign that they sinned against the Lord. So every single person was not, you're not, wasn't going to be able to see the curses being present in all people on the earth. So when you read Deuteronomy 28 verse, verse 15 down to verse 68, if you're spiritual, you should be able to find out who those curses fit more than anybody else on the earth and if you can't do that then the spirit has blocked you from receiving the message man of what the bible is really talking about right which is what's happened with christians man because they're liars man their whole thing is about lying and that's why if you ask them simple questions like who is the law given to they'll say everyone when the bible don't say that if you say to them who's the new covenant for they'll lie and say that the new covenant is for everyone, but the Bible don't say that. If you say to them, who did the Messiah die for? Who does the Bible say that he died for? They'll say everyone, but the Bible don't say that though. The Bible says he died for the Israelites. If you ask them what the color of the Messiah is, they'll lie. When the Bible says that he was dark skinned, dark, it don't say he was olive skinned, Mediterranean -y. It don't say he was Caucasian looking. It says that his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters, meaning he had a loud spoken voice. The hair on his head was a wool like texture, right? It says like wool, it's not literally wool, it's like wool, just like how Israelite men, right, as the world would call it, so called black men, they have wool like texture hair. All of them, not some, all. And the beard was the same too, man. Was white and in wool-like texture. That's what it says about the Messiah. But if you ask them, they're going to lie. Because that's their main thing to do now. Because all the things that used to be mentioned in the Bible, that they used to speak about, they never thought it was relevant to mention the curses. But then they always tried to pretend as though they wanted to know who the lost tribes of Israel were. But that's the main way to find them, is it not? Because that's the sign on them, to find out who they are. So who's the curses for you? Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy power to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I commanded this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And Christianity never spoke about that because if they spoke about that then people that go into their congregation would start trying to find out who this is facing. Man. They'd start finding out who they are because the main people that are in the churches are who? Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. The main people that believe in God are those people. They're the main people that 
any religion that they try and follow, they follow it to the best of their ability, more so than anybody else. And they find out the ins and outs of that belief system, man. Which is why we can bring out things in the Bible that these Christians can't bring out, man. And we read book from books in the Bible that they don't even know exist. We're able to say how many sons Abraham had, which is eight. We're able to know what, 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 who the Edomites are on earth. We're able to know these things, man. Because Yahweh deals with Israelite men. And he speaks to them in a different way than what he guides, talks to anybody else, man. Because he don't, he don't know these other people, man. He don't know them. And that's why I'm going to be speaking about the transferring of Yahweh's curse. Because that's something that Christianity don't like to speak about. They're trying to say that it's just on everyone. But how does it, how, where does it say that it was going to be on everyone in the Bible? It says it was going to be specifically on the Israelites. Because the other nations was going to be used to put the curse on the Israelites. So how could it be on everyone? When, when you read the curses, it says that the other nations were going to rise up against them. As part of the curse. So how could it be on everyone man? When part of the curse that happened to the Israelites. Was the Babylonian Empire taking them down. And was the Assyrian Empire taking them down. So was the Babylonians or the Assyrians under the curses. Of Deuteronomy the 28th chapter. When they took the Israelites down. Was that, is that what you're trying to say? Because it don't make no sense man. Was the, was the Greeks under the curses. When they took the Israelite, when they took the Israelites down as well, was the Romans under the curses when they took the Israelites down? No, they weren't, man. When you read the book of Judges, that's the curses. All them times that the Israelites were led into captivity, that's the curse. Was those other nations that took them down cursed when they was taking the Israelites down, or was they taking the Israelites down because the Israelites was cursed? And that's why nobody wants to hear you Christians talk about the Bible no more, man. Because you're lying all the time, man. This is Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things have come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all nations with your Yahweh thy power have given thee. So what's that saying? That's letting you know that the Israelites had to receive the blessings for a time. And they also had to receive the curse because Yahweh wanted us to receive that. He wanted us to experience both sides of it, man. He wanted us to experience the life and he wanted us to experience the death because we're going through a journey to become rulers of the earth, man. That's what the Israelites are going through. They're, they're receiving the ultimate balance, man, of knowing every aspect of what it's like to be on earth. Verse 2, And thou shalt return unto Yahweh thy power and shalt, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul. So that's also prophesied for the Israelites to receive the blessing and the curse and for them to return unto Yahweh and obey his voice according to all that he commands them. So it's, a, it's part of the plan. So all these people saying that the Israelites are cast away and all of that, that's not true. Because the main person they try and use to try and say that the Israelites are cast away is Paul. And Paul said that the Israelites are not cast away because he himself is an Israelite. From the tribe of Benjamin. So what are you people talking about man? Why is it so easy. For us to find lies in your doctrine. Why is it so easy for us to do that man? Verse 3. In fact verse 2 again. And now shall return unto you how thy power. And shall obey his voice. According to all that I command thee this day. Thou and thy children. With all thine heart. And with all thy soul. That then you how thy power. Will turn thy captivity. And have compassion upon thee. And will return and gather thee from all the nations whither Yahweh thy power had scattered thee. So that going into a gathering too. And when you go to Revelation 7 and 9, doesn't it speak about a great amount of people that was taken from all nations? Why does it say that? Because that's the fulfilling of this thing that was spoken long before John was on the island of Patmos. Long before that time, man. Long before Yahweh Shai was a sacrifice for Israel, that he went and faced that sacrifice. Long before that. This is still in the time where Moses was alive that this thing was prophesied to take place. And that's why you Christians struggle with the Bible because you don't understand how long it's been since the Israelites have been waiting to receive the, this kingdom. Man. You don't understand that 
long time ago, these things have been prophesied to take place, man. You don't understand the depths and the, the, the longer waiting of the kingdom that the Israelites have been waiting for. You don't understand that, man. You have just came out of nowhere, mistranslated words, and then tried to say John 3, 16, and, and then tried to ignore every prophecy that speaks about the Israelites receiving their kingdom. That's all you've did. And it worked for a time, but now it's not working no more, is it? Because now people have got questions, man. Now people want answers. Now people have seen things take place in the world and they want to know what that means using the Bible. They don't want to hear your opinion. They want to hear what the Bible says because they're hearing other people use the Bible and it's making sense to them. So they try and go to you for an alternative thought process and you just give them some gibberish. So then they say, you know what? Obviously, these guys don't know what they're talking about. Maybe these Israelite people that are calling them Israelites, maybe they know what they're talking about. Because it's obvious that Edomites are not trustworthy anyway. Just look at the world, man. It's obvious you ain't trustworthy. You ain't trustworthy, man. Not even close. Verse 4. Do you want to defer in verse 4? If any of thine be driven out to the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will you have thy power gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. So there ain't going to be no place on the earth that an Israelite is scattered that they can't be gathered. And they're going to have different appearances because of this. Some of them are going to look like a so-called natural, whatever the world would say, so-called black man appearance. Some are going to look like Caucasians, right? It's going to be a great multitude from all kindreds, people, Tonga nations, but they're all going to be Israelites. And that's one of the things that's the hardest pill for you people to swallow, man. Because you want to try and call us racist so bad according to your way of talking about these things. But when you hear the doctrine and you hear what we say this, you can't try and put that on us. Because it's not according to anything that you earthly people understand. It's according to spiritual things, man. It's according to the lineage that you go back to. And the ultimate form of knowing what lineage you go back to is can you understand this message? When you hear this message, does it sing to your soul? Does it, does it feel like you're being called when you hear this? Because if it does, then you're an Israelite. And you're not whatever earthly nationality you've been given. You wanted, you go back to a biblical nationality. Do you want to check the 30 and verse 4? If any of thine be driven out to the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will he have thy power gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee, and you have thy power will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. So we're going to be even greater than what the Israelites were during the time of King David, and what the Israelites were during the time of King Solomon. And we're going to be better than that, because we're going to be immortal in that kingdom. So are, the, so are those men in the, going to be back in there too. King David's going to be there. King Solomon's going to be there too. Right? For those that know who that is. In the spiritual sense of that. Verse 5. And Yahweh thy power will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. And thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. And Yahweh thy power will circumcise thine heart. And the heart of thy seed. To love Yahweh thy power with all thine heart and with all thy soul. And that's the main thing that all Israelites are waiting for man. Whether they really even know it or not man. Because we don't want to be wicked man. We don't want to have a discrepancy with a fellow Israelite. We want to see another Israelite and it just be shallow arms and no no grief. That's what we want it to be. We don't want to have to be thinking about getting in attack mode. Oh, is this Israelite going to try and do something dodgy? Is he going to try and is he going to try and just think that I'm in a gang because he's in a gang? Is he going to try and smash my car window? Or is he going to try and shoot me? Is he going to try and rob my house? If I, if I invite him into my house, is he going to try and do something to do something to my woman? What is he going to do? We don't want to have to have all those thoughts in our mind because we've got enough enemies, man. We've got enough enemies down here already. But how the, the way how Yahweh gave it us as a punishment for our sins is that damn near everyone's our enemy in this world, man. Even ourselves are enemy against our own self. But this is the new covenant, Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 6. That's what he's speaking about, man. The changing of our mind, man, so that our hearts are finally 
have that hardened nature, that stiff neck removed from us, man. Verse seven, and this is going. This is this is the point of this whole video. It's coming back to the whole point where I was talking about at the beginning. Doing it to the thirty and verse seven, and how would I power put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them, and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee? So how can salvation be for everybody? If when the Israelites have their hearts circumcised, so that they can follow the ways of the Lord with all their heart and with all their soul, the enemies of the Israelites are going to be having those curses that cause them to fall put on them. How can we all be equal? Then? How can salvation be for everybody if this is going to take place? Because salvation is not for everybody, right? It's not. And that's why when you go into the scriptures, it says things like this. Let me get it. And it says this in two different locations, one time applying specifically to the Edomites and another time applying to all nations. Right. I'll read the one applying to all nations first. Jeremiah chapter 25 and verse 27. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the God of Israel, drink ye and be drunken and spew and fall and rise no more because of the sword which I will send among you and it shall be if they refuse to take the cup at thine hand to drink then thou shalt say thus saith you have host ye shall certainly drink for lo I begin to bring evil on the city which is called by thy name and shall thou be utterly unpunished ye shall not be unpunished for I will call for a sword upon all of the inhabitants of the earth Say if you have host, so everyone's gonna experience the same thing that made the Israelites a laughing stock, the same thing that made people say that the so-called black man's a deadbeat dad, that were broke, that were just thugs, that were bums, that were broke, that were dusty, that were crusty, right? That were that were this, that were that, that were bad fathers, right? That were that were all these things, all the terms that people have got, all the terms that we know about, all the slander. All the things that people said, everything that they said that made us be like that, right? The things that made us be like that, which was the curses that made even people be able to speculate that we was all of these things that they said. That's going to be brought upon all of you heathens, man. All of you. Not some. Every single one of you. And there's nothing you can do about it, neither. You can try and come at Israelites with a sword. You can try and shoot, blow up the moon. You can try and shoot nukes at the moon. You can try and do anything that you want to do under the sun. It's none of it's going to work because none of it was able to work. Nothing was able to work when we wanted to try and escape out of the curses that Yahweh put us on. Nothing was able to work, man. But the difference between the Israelites and the heathen is that the Israelites was given a sacrifice for the wickedness that they was given, that they was doing. You heathens don't have an old sacrifice because Yahweh don't love you like that. You ain't the vessels of mercy. We are. And even for all you other nations that are Hebrews, that you go back to Abram too, you ain't in the right Hebrew. You ain't in the right type of Hebrew, man. We're the Hebrew Israelites. You ain't in the right kind of Hebrew. You're those rejected Hebrews, man. The rejected ones. You're the runts of the litter. We're the vessels of mercy. We're the chosen, man. And this hurts you to hear, but we are. And the curses that we've faced proves that we are. The ones that Yahweh loves, he punishes when they do something wrong. The ones he don't care about, he just lets them fulfill everything that they do. And when it's time to crush him, he crushes them, man. Easy work. And you people think it's funny when you hear these things. You think, nah, that could never happen. Well, it's going to happen, though. And when it does happen, you're going to remember all the videos that you saw that he was leaving comments under, talking smack. You're going to remember all the Israelites that you walked by in the street. You can remember the times where you threw things out the window at men when they was doing things. You can remember all the wickedness that you did, man. You can remember when you got men fired from their job. You can remember when you saw a new Israelite moving to your neighborhood and you called the police and said that you can see a man robbing a house. You can remember all the false witness, man. You can remember when a delivery driver was just doing his job. He might have worked for UPS. He was just doing his job delivering packages and you bothered him. Started stalking him, following him, asking him what he's doing in the neighborhood, as if he can't see the UPS logo on his clothes. 
right? You, all you Karens are going to remember all the lies that you said about Israelite men, about how he did that, that to you and how he did this to you just because he rejected you and didn't want you. So you lied and said that he did something that you wished that he really did do to you. You're going to remember all of that, man. You're going to be cursed. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You're going to be cursed whether you like it or not, man. There's no way that you're going to be able to escape out of this. It's not possible, man. Because we wasn't able to escape out of it when we wanted, when we, when it was our turn to go for it. So neither will you be able to. Jeremiah chapter 49 and verse 12. Thus saith Yahweh, behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken, and that thou he that shall altogether go unpunished, thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. So there's no escape. When it's time for the Lord to bring wrath upon the earth, you can't escape. Did Pharaoh escape when Yahweh wanted to harden his heart? No. Did Nebuchadnezzar escape when it was time for him to fall and to, and to be turned into a beast? No. Did Belshazzar escape? No, he didn't. Did Antiochus Epiphanes escape when his time was given? No, he didn't. Did Menelaus escape when he was going against the Israelites and he was an Israelite himself? Did he escape the judgment that was pro prophesied for him to experience? No. Did Ahab escape when he was told that he was going to be given a, a lion prophet, a, a lion spirit among the, his prophets. Was he able to escape that? No. You can't escape, man. These things happen whether you like it or not. No man can escape. Because Yahweh's got prophecies that he wants to take place. And no man can override those, man. And the people that are trying to do that, these fools, these foolish Idumian nation, they're trying to do it, but it's not going to work, man. Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 10, for thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thou hast said, none seeth me, thy wisdom and thy knowledge have perverted thee, thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me, and that's why they've got all these occultic, esoteric, exoteric, whatever words you want to use, hidden things that they do, all these weird hand symbols that they do and all that, all these hidden left hand energy, all these things that they do where they think people ain't watching, right, all these secret things that they do, all the pneumology, all this stuff that they do behind the scenes, Right? And they thought nobody would ever be able to decipher it. But now your own people that are into these things are deciphering it. And it's become the knowledge is coming out, man. And it's turning out that everything that you people do is dodgy, man. And now Yahweh is going to call for you to since you think that that stuff was really working rather than Yahweh just allowing you to get away with these things and just giving you some stupid random rituals to do that he pretended like they are always going to work. Right? You're going to get to test and see if that stuff works all the time. And you're going to find out that it don't. Verse 11. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. And thou shalt. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth. And mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon thee. Suddenly which thou shalt not know. Stand now with thine enchantments. And with the multitude of thy sorcery. Which wherein thou hast laboured from thy youth. If thou be. Thou shalt able to profit. If so be. If so, be thou shalt be able to profit. If so, be thou mayest prevail. So if these things really have energy and power, right, then they're going to be able to work even against Yahweh, right? But when you come to try and do these things against the Lord, it's not going to work anymore, man. Because really, you were just being put in a snare when you was doing these things. You was being tricked into thinking that these things work, man. But really, they never worked, right? Really, these things never carried any power. And you're going to live to see that, man. And you're going to face the same curses. And not only you Edomites. <coughs> but all you heathen nations. All the enemies of the Israelites are going to face the same curses man. So people that have got a problem with who people are saying the Israelites are. Well alright fair enough. If you don't believe that we're the Israelites. Well if we're not the Israelites. And you're not the Israelites. Then you're still going to be facing that same curse along with us then. Because none of you want to say that you're the Israelites. But you've got a problem with us saying that we are. So you're still going to be facing the curses anyway. Because you're that means you're still an enemy of the Israelites. Because since you're not an Israelite yourself. According to your own voice saying that. But you people don't know the Bible for real man. And I'm going to end the lesson there, there man. The curses are going to be transferred from the Israelites. 
unto all the heathen nations. All praises to Yahweh, but Hashem Yahweh Shai, but Hashem Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel. Shalom.